Hey guys, here we are, Long Haul Larry Big Blue. We are actually in a rest area at St. Mary's, Ohio. And we got in here early this morning and we did our break and everything. And I have decided that I'm going to do an installation of something that my boss bought. And we're going to be installing this on the trailer right now. I also have this kit that I'm going to be putting into Big Blue itself. But for right now, we're just going to be throwing it into the trailer. And it is the right way load scale system. Um, I'll show you what's in there in a second. I also got this accessory pack, which basically is a bunch of airline and a bunch of fittings. That's all it is. So, really not too much to it. Um, we're going to install this in a trailer. I have looked at the directions. I've looked through them. And usually I just kind of like... If you guys watch my videos, I just throw the instructions as soon as I open a box. But this one, I thought, eh, it, you know, I've never put one in. Maybe there's something technical about it. Really, there isn't. It's really simple. Really super simple. Uh, I, asked, I asked the cost of it so that I could let you guys know how much this thing costs. And bus man just said $200. I'm not sure if that is the way system for the truck and the trailer and the accessory kit I don't know or if it's just a kit that goes onto the trailer either way $200 that's worth it um, in my eyes because really think about it $11.50 for scaling a load you know you do that 20 times let's say I don't know what maybe three months to a period let's say you haul 40,000 pound loads in 20 times in a three month period Right there you're getting your money back so i don't think that this is legal um that this wouldn't hold up in a court of law i think that if you if you scaled the load to this scale and then you got pulled into a scale and you were overweight and this was incorrect i don't believe that you'd be able to go into a court of law and say well hey i had this thing and this dial said it was this I don't think they're going to take that. Um, not like a CAT scale where they print you out a ticket and everything and it shows the weights. Then if you get pulled in there, they're supposed to fight it. Um, I've never had it happen, but I could imagine all the drama going through all that and trying to get CAT scale to go to court and fight the ticket for you and everything. But, but I don't think that these guys, because this is something that is installed, <clears throat> nobody knows if it's been tampered with or calibrated, you know, it, there's really no way to make sure that this is going to be correct every single time that, you, that it's been used. So I doubt that there's anything like that with this. But I think these are pretty cool. There is one trailer in the fleet uh, that has this on there, and it's awesome. It, it's really cool. There's just, you just feel so much more confident. You go get a load, go back there, you pull a button, you got 32,000 pounds on that, on that rear panel. It's like, hey, cool, we're ready to go. So let's take a look, see what's in the box. Well, the first thing is this accessory kit. And basically all it is is just some fittings. That's all really it is. It has two different size fittings, matter depending upon what you have for airlines already and everything. Yeah, that's all it is. It's two different size fittings and some adapters to make it all work. Um, I actually would rather have a different adapter. I'd rather actually just have a T adapter with the compressed fittings without all this. They want you to tie it into the airbag system, but I kind of have to go all the way to the airbag in the rear to be able to do that. And to tell you the truth, I'd rather just have a shorter line and just go right there first air big, but I don't have enough room to put this T on top and then put the existing T on top of this. So, and then it comes with an instruction booklet. Can't, I really can't think that that would cost too much. And this one here, <clears throat> you can see here, it's uh, the part number. It's uh, 310-HKANT40K-PP, 3.5 pound scale for 40,000 pound tandem axle with a plastic enclosure and a push valve. Uh, here is the instructions and they're real simple. Basically it goes through, you know, has all your little safety stuff. 
table of contents and everything, what kind of things you're going to need. It talks about the accessory kit. And then basically, this gives you pictures. Here's a truck. Here's an airbag. <laughs> line goes in. Tap into that line. Put it to the box. That's all there is to it. It's so simple. That's it. And then it talks, and then it tells you how to um, calibrate it, which is very simple. It talks about the uh, operating systems and everything. And then troubleshooting. Why is it not working? And a warranty. So this first way is commanded to a Right way assumes no responsibility or avail or liability for any loss or damages result from the use of right way products. So there you go. So that basically just says it right out. So that basically just says it right out and everything that if you do get pulled in and get an overweight ticket, that they're not gonna be responsible. Um, real simple, just a little bag of bolts. And then here it is. Here's a bracket. This here you just mount up underneath wherever you want. Drill a couple holes, put the bolts right up in there. It's a two bigger bolts. And then basically, this sits on there like so. And there's some bolt holes on the back. You just put the bolt holes through the case, bolt it on there, put an airline out here to the airbag, done. Take a look inside. Real simple, um, just talks about calibration instructions, stuff like this, operating instructions, same thing as a booklet. And then basically it just has the gauge right here. And um, to operate this, all you do is you just hook this up to the airbag, and when you have air back to the trailer and everything else, the air pressure from the airbag will go into this little nipple right here, and it basically just uh, puts the pounds, the pressure of the airbag, the pounds per square inch or whatever, into this little dial, and they have it figured out that at 75 PSI, it makes this much weight. You know, that means it's that much weight or this much weight. So that's all they do is have it figured out and then just have the numbers printed on there. And all you do is just pull this out. That releases air into the valve. The needle will go up. It'll tell you to wait. When you're not using it, you just push it back in. Close it back up in its little case. And away you go. As you can see, we are actually here in a rest area. <laughs> and it's actually raining. It was coming down pretty good before, but it, um, it pretty much just stopped. So it's kind of just a few sprinkles. And I'm going to be real honest with you, I'm not made of sugar. So, so we'll be okay if we get a little damp. But all I did is I just took a box. This is actually the box that the boss gave me all the parts in. And just cut it out and threw it on the ground so I don't get all wet. And let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the box. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna come up with different locations for mounting this. Personally, my, my place I would mount it would be up here someplace. I'd run the line with these lines coming out and I would actually have it mounted behind here, behind this, and have it mounted so that the box sticks out, kind of just flush, just so you can open the door. But that's not where a boss man wants it. I asked him and he wants it mounted the same place that R74 has it mounted. So he wants it mounted right here. It's like that. So he wants it mounted up in there, so that's where we're going to put it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this existing hole right here. I'm going to use this hole to um, put my first bolt in.
There we go. Plate is mounted. All right, now we need to mount our box. It's just gonna go just like so. So I'm just gonna put that there through. Put a washer on there. And these are little nylon block nuts. That may be you to shut off. I don't have it set for temperature or nothing like that. Don't really need it. It's a pretty nice day out. It just runs when, uh, because I have electrical stuff running in my truck. So it just keeps the, the power level up. Everything charged, batteries, good charge on them, so. It's kind of nice. Instead of running your batteries down, it gets down to a certain level, the APU kicks on, runs for a little while until everything gets recharged back up. The reason why I'm putting them in backwards, um, I don't think this is ever gonna happen, but you can actually lock this box. You go on here and there's a little tab there, and it's made out of plastic, it could be broken. If somebody wants to get in here, they can. But I'm putting them in backwards so that the nuts are on the inside, so if somebody wants to try to steal this, and you have a padlock on there, the nuts are in the inside. It makes it, just makes it harder. That's all it does. Is it gonna keep somebody from stealing it? No. Uh, there goes the APU again already. I gotta have all the lights on in there and stuff, so. All right, there we go. There's our box mounted. And there it is, it's all secured up. Um, when I run this out, uh, before I drop it, I'll make sure to check all the nuts and bolts and make sure they're all still tight and everything, but they should be all good. There we go. So now all we do is we just put a fitting down in here, run an airline up here, and then run it back to an airbag. See now this is your leveling, your air leveling back here. This is the discharge hose, so that when the, when the suspension goes up, it'll release some air so that the tires you know go up and down. It discharges the air out of there. You have your main supply that comes from your air tanks and everything. It goes into the valve. And then this valve, if you take this, if you unhook this, you can raise it up and it'll go It'll put in air and, and release air. Then this line comes out and it goes to that airbag. And then there's a T off of there and that goes to that airbag. Then there's another T and that one comes back. And it goes to this airbag. And then the line comes over and it goes into here. Now, I think this is the easiest one right here. Um, I just kind of think that this is the easiest one for right here to um, to hook to. Yeah. You know what? I, I probably just figured out why that other trailer moves forward when it bumps against the dock. You see this right here? That's what this is. When you release the air, these little airbags. They, push, they purge, and this thing, this whole arm is, on, arm is on a lever here, and this thing will rotate, and these little plates, they flip up, and they lock onto the frame here. That keeps the trailer from coming down. So when you back into a dock, instead of the, the 
the forklift going in and the trailer bouncing and and the same thing what happens with the other trailer you know it drops down and then it pushes it forward with the suspension because the axles will roll this way it keeps it and keeps it up like that so when they go in it doesn't bounce so much and everything so that's what that's for I bet you the other trailer doesn't have this on all right so basically what we're gonna do is just take off this fitting put up put a T fitting that I can run a lot airline up to that box and screw this fitting back into the top so let's get started all right guys now we're back here I have released the the air for the trailer I pulled the trailer valve up in the truck and you can see what happens see these things are spring-loaded they pop forward like that it releases the air out of this little airbag pops forward drops down on there so now if the air releases out of the truck out of the trailer it's not going to come all the way down it's only going to come until it rests on there I'm going to tell you be careful don't get your fingers in between there <laughs> That would be bad. Really, really bad. I don't need a 5 8 There is a valve up underneath there on the tank. I guess I just lost my other camera. There is a valve up underneath the truck. Or the trailer here. See, I released the air. I just forgot to interrupt the bow of the air. I just pulled the airline off. You could go up underneath there. There's a little tad. You can release the air. I didn't feel like crawling or it's wet. But as that happened, you saw it. It came down and all the weight is now sitting on here. See, these airbags are completely deflated. So, now, I'm just going to pull this fitting out. like so and then we have this installation kit I'm just gonna open this up dump all the valves out and I'll find the ones that I need so basically I just need one that this will screw into which is gonna be the smaller one there we go good so now that one should screw right in here, just like that. Perfect. Okay. I don't use Teflon tape. I use a, um, a thread goo. Actually wondering. Be better. No, it's gonna be up here. So we'll just tighten this up. There we go. 
this in here. There we go. All right, so now I need to put another fitting in here to screw my quarter inch line into. There we go. Put our airline back in for our supply. It's almost a too much of a bend there. If I had another little compression ring with me, which I don't, I'd probably cut that off to make it more of a sweep. I don't have anything out here with me, so I'll just hook it up this way, and and uh, the next time I'm with this trailer, I'll just grab one. Get new compression rings for like 50 cents. just gonna run my line from here I'm probably gonna take it up and go underneath and follow this line and tie it right with that line and go along the tray and go right up to the front we're gonna we'll tie it right with that line cut it off right about there I got a bunch extra up in the front there we go Compression fittings, you just sometimes you gotta there you go. Gotta wiggle it. Nah, gonna have to pull it there. Gonna have to pull it apart. Basically what these compression fittings do is you have a nut here, you just put that on, and it's got this little compression ring, and that compression ring is going to it has a flat side on the back and a and a tapered on the back. So as the nut tightens on it, it squishes it and it tightens it around this hose and then on here there's a little piece that sticks out it is the inside diameter of this so it sticks inside there this goes over the top of it and it squishes it squeezes that hose and it squeezes it on top of there that way the hose cannot collapse it gets it really nice and tight so we'll just put that on there push it in there just like so And then we just tighten that up. There we 
we go. All right, we got our line all tied up all the way up through here. We got it sticking out right here. We got a bunch of extra. Now all we gotta do is down at the bottom here, we just gotta put a fitting on there. So we'll, a little thread goop. Probably put too much thread goop. I always like putting lots of thread goop. Thread that on up in there. Now, I can see already, this is screwed up into the base, this little nut. So you need to put a, you're gonna need to put a wrench on this bottom nut that comes out of this plastic case to make sure it doesn't turn when you tighten this up. Well, as you might strip something out, so I would I'd recommend you put two wrenches on this. I'm gonna put it right about, probably right about there. See how that looks. Actually, I'm gonna put it a little more so it's angled that way. Like that. Yeah, that looks good. Put it right about here. I might have a little bit of that hose wrap stuff. Cause it's gonna need a piece right here. You can see that already. The rest of it's all good. But right here, that's gonna vibrate and it's gonna sit against there and that where is that in there it's gonna make the trailer it's gonna make the trailer suspension leak. So we'll cut the hose here. Make just a nice flowing little we don't want it to be tight, don't want it to be too loose. So right about there. I use these little knives right here. I get these at Walmart, they're really nice. Working on things, I keep them in my truck. Sometimes if you have to unload a load or something like that, you gotta cut all the wrap. It's actually a razor blade, you just push this button, right here, push that button. It's actually a razor blade, just like a utility knife. But then it's also basically like a pocket knife. And you can clip it on your belt, nice. They come in like pairs, you can buy two of them in a package for like nine bucks. I always keep one in my toolbox and I keep one in my truck. There we go, put that in there. I'm gonna go see if I can find a little piece. So as you guys can see, I scaled the load. And what I did is, I came out with 27,000, that's as much as I could get. So I have air onto the trailer right now. And look at that, it is right on 27,000, it was just over 27,000. That is, that is right there. Can't get much better. I don't even need to calibrate it. So this thing is good to go. Well, there you guys go. Installation of the right way load scale on a trailer. And I couldn't get it to the weight they wanted me to in the instructions to calibrate it. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it was. But we're all good here. Um, I'll kind of remember that. Maybe sometime when I get a heavier load, then I'll check it out, I guess. But all set up all done ready to go so I hope you guys uh, like this video and I hope that everyone out there is having themselves a great day a great night when they're watching this here video and if you are not we certainly could change that and just try it all over again tomorrow 
So until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.